Box Shadows in Automatic CSS have received a major upgrade, and that's what I want to cover in this video. We have the introduction of customizable values, customizable names, and box shadow variables. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. The first thing I want to cover is the base use of box shadows in Automatic CSS, which has been around since version 1. We have three box shadows available, and they can easily be added to elements using classes. So if we type in box shadow double dash, we're going to have the options of medium, large, and extra large, M, L, and XL. So I'm going to put a medium box shadow on this box, box shadow L on this box, and box shadow XL on this box. And you can see, progressively, the shadow gets bigger, a little bit deeper. But here's the thing. These box shadows obviously don't work for everyone and don't work for every website. And previously, users did not have the ability to customize the values of these box shadows. And they also didn't have the ability to customize the names. And of course, medium, large, and extra large, the size of a box shadow is not the only factor in, in how a box shadow looks and behaves. We can have different softness levels. We can have a different depth. We can have multi-layered shadows, single-layered shadows. We can have a lot of things going on with box shadows. And to really make these powerful, or I should say almost unlimited, users should be able to change their name, users should be able to change their value, and users should also be able to reference these values using variables. So down here, what we're going to take a look at is, first off, how to use the new feature of variables for box shadows. So we want to apply the medium box shadow to this. Now, I'm going to do this at the ID level. Normally, you would apply this with a custom class. So you'd be working on a custom element like a service card or a testimonial card or something like that. And you want to add one of your box shadows. So you're going to go down to CSS. We're going to type in root, which in bricks, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit for you here. In bricks, root is just a token for the element that is currently selected, whether that be the ID or a class, it doesn't matter. You just type in root, and then you could name any other styles here that you wanted. But of course, you can always define a box shadow. And we're gonna use the var function, which if you don't wanna write all the vars and you're obviously using automatic CSS, you can simply write the variable. And when you put the semicolon on the end, it's gonna automatically expand that expression for you. So box shadow, we're going to say uh, box shadow M. And then I'm going to hit the semicolon. It's going to auto expand the variable function. And then we can see the box shadow applied, the medium box shadow applied to that box. I can do this again on the large box. So I'm going to define a box shadow. And this is going to be box shadow L. And then when I hit semicolon, it wraps it in the var. And then I can move on to XL. Same thing, define a box shadow, and we're going to say this is box shadow XL. And we get our extra large shadow. So if we look on the front end, these were applied with classes. These were applied with variables. They look exactly the same. Why? Because they're referencing the exact same values. It's exactly what you would expect to see. Now we need to talk about customizing these box shadows. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the automatic CSS uh, dashboard, and I'm going to go under additional styling, and you're going to see this box shadows area in the additional styling tab. And you're going to see that they don't say box shadow M and L and XL. They say one, two, and three, because the name can actually be changed now. You can customize the name to whatever you want it to say. You could call this hard. You could call it soft. You could call it main. You can call it, you could call it whatever you want. Um, but that's up to you. Or you can leave it. You can leave it as M. If you are satisfied with the current naming convention, then go ahead and leave it. Now, in the value box, you can simply define a new value. So I'm going to say 2 pixel, 2 pixels, 60 pixels, minus 5 pixels. And then I can even use a color variable from automatic CSS. We'll use base, ultra, dark, trans, 20. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hit save changes. And then if we watch these two box shadows right here, which use the, this one uses the medium class, this uses the medium variable. I just changed the value for medium, right? So we're going to refresh and we have a brand new box shadow style on that box. Now, if we come back here, 
we can see that I wrote a very simple box shadow value. If we wanted to do something very complex, like a really multi-layered shadow, I can go, you know, 10, 9, 10 layers deep with my shadow. Uh, I can bring it up very dark. This is obviously extremely ugly, but we're just making the point here that you can pretty much, I mean, this is a very complex box shadow value right here. And it's unfortunately not going to let me select the uh, just the inside of that value. So I'm going to paste that in. I'm going to remove the semicolon. I'm going to remove all of this. And we'll take out the extra spaces. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit Save Changes here. So as you can see, I mean, that's a fairly complex box shadow value. We're going to go to our front end. And we're going to see that it's still absolutely works. You can put any valid box shadow value into this box and you are going to get exactly what you want to get. Now, let's talk about naming. There is a very important thing to understand with names. When I change the name of this, which I'm gonna change it to main, so from M to main, and I'm gonna go ahead and save changes, Everything rewrites, okay? All of the CSS rewrites. And here's the unfortunate reality is that anything that already has box shadow M, the old name or the old variable is not gonna work anymore. So you wanna be very careful with this. Box shadows are something that we recommend you set up at the beginning of a project. So before you use any box shadow variables or classes on your website, you already know what your box shadow styles are gonna be. Or when you're creating that first box shadow, go ahead and set up the box shadows area to be exactly the way you need it for this website going forwards. And then you're fine. You're not gonna run into any issues whatsoever. If you go ahead and use the, the existing box shadow styles all over the place, and then you come along and decide, oh no, I wanna change the names of all of those. And you can always change the values. Changing the values is very safe non-destructive. But if you're going to change the names, you have to realize that it's just like in CSS. If you decided you use this class everywhere and decided you wanted to rename it, you'd have to go everywhere and rename it. Well, in Bricks, you can just rename the class. But in the old days of uh, being in a builder where you couldn't just easily edit a class name or VS Code, you have to find every iteration of that class and you have to change the name of the class. This is the exact same thing here. This is a destructive edit. So you want to be very careful when messing with the names of your box shadows. You can always change the values, but if you're going to change the name, you have to be aware that any Anytime you've used that name previously, the, the one that was here first, right? M, whatever the default was, those are no longer going to work, okay? So just be very careful with that. Understand what's going on here. But as you can see, uh, if we, let's go ahead and refresh our builder. Let's refresh on the front end. So we now have broken shadows here. Let's go ahead and see how to fix them. You're gonna notice that when I type in box shadow double dash, this is a key thing that we see all the time in our support requests. Um, in the style sheet, there is something called box shadow double dash main now, because we just created it. It's not going to be in the auto suggest list. You're not gonna see it here being auto suggested until you've used it once. So if I type in box shadow main, you can see it's not in the, in the database. I hit enter. I still get box shadow main. And now if I came down here and typed it, I'm going to see it in the drop down because I've now used it. Just because it's not shown here doesn't mean it's not going to work. It doesn't mean it's not in the style sheet. This is a completely separate thing. This is a bricks class database thing. And this is completely separate. It does not pull classes from style sheets. It pulls classes based on what we with the automatic CSS plugin have put into the Bricks database. You just change the name of a box shadow on the fly, automatic CSS has no opportunity to go put that into the database, nor should we want to, because maybe you change that name five times before you're satisfied with it and start using your box shadows. We don't want five, all, all five of those things now stuffed into the database. So this is the cleanest way to do it. It'll be there once you've used it. Now it's always in the style sheet, It'll be there in the, in the database once you've used it on an element. But now I can come down here and it's going to be the exact same thing. The variable has been rewritten. If I simply change M to main, you're going to now see the new box shadow take effect. 
This gives you a lot more flexibility with box shadows in automatic CSS. It's been a long requested feature, the ability to change the values to any value that's valid, the ability to change the names of the box shadows. You still have three really solid options. Most sites do not have three different or more than three different box shadow styles. So this should cover almost all use cases. If you have questions, as always, jump into the community. We're happy to help you there. Drop a comment below on the video. If you like this feature, give it a thumbs up. We love you guys. Thank you for your support. And I'll be back with more features very, very soon.